things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Yes. Now, I'll come back because there's a, there's a whole lot of meat in this, these verses right here. There's a whole lot of message in these two verses. But just so you know, I'll, I'll have an opportunity at a later date to share more of that message. But there's a lot. First off, he says, all authority, say all authority, all authority. has been given to me in heaven and on earth. In other words, he, get this, royalty, amen? All authority. Did you know that with his authority comes power? Are you hearing that? With authority comes power. You know, you can have authority, but if you ain't got no power, what good is your authority? Come on. How many of you think that he has not only the, the power, but he also has the ability? Now, the thing we have to look at is that he gives us an ability. I love what the scriptures it teaches us. He, the, the scriptures teaches us he takes those who are not equipped and he equips them. Yes, he does. Can I tell you, that's what the church is here for. That's what the church has been gifted for, for the equipping of saints to do what? To make them feel good. To make them happy. No. To witness and to make disciples. To make disciples. To, to do work of ministry. Because the idea of just coming to church and get, get this, just to, to coast through life. Can I tell you, the only way coasting works and keeps working is downhill. <laughs> yeah, uh, anybody? <laughs> Here we are in Revelations. In, in the 21st, ver, uh, 21st chapter, it says, this is John the Revelation. He says, Now I saw heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, now New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things, say former things, former things. have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Yes. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. Praise the Lord. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and I and he shall be my son. Yeah. Mm, do I want to read the next? Because it gets you in trouble. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm. I should have stopped at verse 7 because I don't like that last one. Some of them might think I'm talking or preaching at them. But, <laughs> Father, today we ask that our hearts would be ready to receive what our minds are about to comprehend. And the church all said, Amen. Amen. Have you ever experienced, uh, been in a place, maybe, maybe work, maybe at school, um, where there was a transition in leadership. Things changed. Um, uh, and you know, maybe, maybe you were one of those people that was in leadership, but suddenly, I won't say you've been demoted, but you've been kind of maybe put aside. Um, here's the thing. Whether it's a new boss, or whether uh, it's a, a, a new parent company, the company you work for has been bought out, like my wife in the bank she works for, Praise the Lord, that transition's going pretty well, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, as things are changing, in the middle of all this transition, say transition, transition, transition. things are messy. Yes. 
Now, having said that, let me tell you something else. Life is messy. <laughs> yeah. Life is messy. And, and the thing is, what, what's happened here, for those of us who get what I'm saying, there was a time before the earth existed, but we live in a time when the earth has, you know, is here. It's been created. And everything that was created, God made it. There was a time when there was no, there was no people. There was, we, were, we were just here. Uh, wait, no, we weren't. There was nothing. Read, read Genesis chapter 1. There was nothing, and then there was something. But see, here's the thing. We just read in, in Revelation that there's going to be a new earth. There's going to be a new Jerusalem. Something's going to change. But right now, we're living between the two worlds. Here's the thing. If, if you are of this world, well, okay, so you're not really living. Yes, you are. You're still living in between two worlds because the other world, the, uh, the underworld, is not where you've gone yet. But the idea is we're all living in between two worlds. We're living between, well, I'll, I'll go back to what I said before, cradle to grave. No, guess, guess what? There was, a, there was a world before you. There'll be a world after you, but there's a world that's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a world in which we exist now. There's a world that is coming. It's called life. And it can be, oh, life is messy. But the problem we have is that many of us are just existing. You see, living life on earth at this point in history, say history, history. history. it's a lot like living through a company buyout. The leadership has changed. Well, it should. It is no, Paul said it is no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. So if that's the fact, then what's happened is what he's saying, I'm not the one that makes up my own mind anymore. Oh, I have the free will. I can choose what I want to choose. I can say what I want to say. But you know what? Jesus gave us an example. Even as he prayed for Lazarus to come up out of the ground. <laughs> Lazarus had died. He'd been dead for three days. And the people around, they saw him. And he said, if you had only been here sooner, what, watch this, if you'd been here sooner, you could have prevented his death. Now, we know Jesus wept at this point. We know he was upset. He was upset for a couple of things. Number one, his friend was dead. Just listen, just so you know, Sister Margaret, that gives us license to weep. Even though we know there's going to be a resurrection, it's okay to weep at loss. So if I say amen. I'm just telling you because what happens is that salvation and, and walking with Christ and all this does not, uh, it does not exclude us from mourning. And suffering loss. That is the whole point. Jesus felt the pain of the loss, even though he knew what he was about to do. But he was also, listen, he was also grieved by something else. Because those people who knew him, those they, they did not understand what he was about to do. But it wasn't him that was going to do it. There was a reason that Lazarus had to go through the pain of death. And he didn't just die, he suffered first. So I say amen. Amen. Jesus gave the reason. Brother Harold, you remember that story? He said that, that that prophecy would be fulfilled. Yes, that's right. And then, as he began to pray, he prayed out loud. Yes. In did. front of God and everybody. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm praying out loud so that these who are here with me know that I am not doing this. That's right. The words are not mine. Are you getting this? Yes. Yeah. You see, because Jesus had taught before, I only do what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear my father telling me to say. The words that I use are not my own. You think, wait a second. This is Jesus. Surely he had his own words. But he chose to use his father's words. Yes, he did. So he prayed out loud. And what happened? Old lamb was come all bound up. Now Jesus, at this point, gave the people responsibility. You see, he came and he, he was out of the grave. But he was still bound up. This is part of that life in the middle. 
life between worlds. Yes. This is part about when you see somebody who's all bound up in some things, you who are spiritual, go to them and loose them and let them go. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yes. You've got to understand, in those days, it was, it was not customary to touch the dead man's clothes or, or to be anything around anything. Well, of course, he's not dead anymore, but surely he's thinking. I don't think they had Febreze those, in those days. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is Jesus commanded them to loose him. And today, he's telling us the same thing. If you love your brother, you love your neighbor, you love your enemies, loose them. Yes, absolutely. Well, how am I going to do that? Quit, doing, quit trying to do things under your own power and your own strength. And right. Because we have been bought with the blood of the price. It's been a buyout. There's a whole new leader, a whole new headship, there's a whole new leadership, all new management. The leadership is supposed to have changed, but even in the world, Jesus is on the throne. Think about this. But evidence of the old regime is still around us. You remember when Jesus prayed, Father, not that you would remove them from the world, but while they're in this world, that their faith shall not, will not fail them. Are you hearing this? Because they're going to be in a world that's, that's full of trials and temptations and trouble. It's not going to be easy. And we're still in our filthy flesh. You see, as, as we look forward to life with, with the new heavens and, and a new earth, we're daily confronted with a temptation. Temptation to go back. Temptation to sin. Well, you know, I think it was easier, you know, back in the day. Someone that um, I was working with in Kalamazoo this week. Oh, well, I'm not going to mention names, but they'll know who they are. He hasn't, he hasn't been in faith very long. Actually, just this year. And um, it's interesting, as I listen, I hear some of my own testimony, because he's got the same testimony. He didn't realize how bad things were until he came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he also knows something else. As you know, life seemed, get this, life seemed to be a whole lot easier. <clears throat> seemed to be a whole lot easier when I lived life the way I lived my life before. I said, yeah, how's that? He says, I stayed drunk. <laughs> I said, but who was that easy for? Are you getting what I'm saying? Anyway. And there are things that happen in our lives when we're sober that might make us want to drink. I know some of you sitting here going, no, nah, never me. No, no, no. I will promise you there is something in your life that right now is looking to tempt you. There's something right now that is looking to ensnare you. When we get so prideful that we, we just look at those things that might be rather obvious. It's so easy to look at other people and see their misgivings and their miscomings and their shortcomings. You see, Jesus never promised us an easy life, but he did promise to be with us. In John chapter 16, verse 33, as a matter of fact, he says this in, in, in this particular scripture. Where did he go? Oh, it's on that page. In John chapter 16, he says, I have said these things to you that you may have peace. But look at this. Don't stop reading there. John 16 and 33 says, In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Somebody say, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And did you know that what Jesus did, you can do. Did he not say that the things that I've done, you can do, and greater things will you do? Because I'm going to the Father. Some, somebody needs to be Lord and clap and praise there because I'm telling you right now that we are all this. We overcome this grace with his grace. Maybe, listen, maybe you're not a rock star. Maybe you can't dance. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're not all that pretty either. I doesn't matter. Maybe there's something in your life that you're ashamed of, but there is no disgrace when it comes to God's grace because Jesus provides enough grace to cover it all. Somebody say amen. 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 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this. God made him who knew no sin 
to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We might become the righteousness of God. I'm hoping to become that every day. I need grace. I need grace for today. I'll need new grace for tomorrow. And tomorrow, I'm going to have to call upon him so that I might become the righteousness of God. Jesus' death and resurrection paid for our past, our present, and our future sin. Yes, it did. See, the thing is, many of us, we have this issue with pride. And the pride is like this. So, because I'm not going to be tempted by this, this, or this. I'm better than they are. Can I tell you, that's pride. In most cases, we won't be tempted by those things because, you know, we really don't like that stuff. You know, drinking, there are some things I can tell you when I was a teenager, I tasted and I'm thinking, how can anybody do this? I don't care how much, how much sweet pop you mix together or how much, I don't care what you did to that. That was nasty stuff. Yet the people would drink it by the pints or the quarts. <laughs> how can they do it? But there were some things that, hmm, I might could like this. Don't tell me that there's not, listen, I hate, I said, I'm not much of a drinker, never have been, because I, I, I did silly things when I drank, embarrassing things. Yeah, just so you know, I wasn't embarrassed while I was under the influence, <laughs> whoever it is, right? <laughs> but after I sobered up, <laughs> after I sobered up, Either my cousin or my wife or someone else said, do you know what you did? I said, no. <laughs> I did not. And then they showed the pictures. Oh. Anyway, don't worry. It was before, before the internet. You're not going to find them. Yeah. And don't let your imagination run wild. <laughs> Here, here's the deal. Satan would love nothing more than to distract us from the commission that we've been given. <clears throat> and there are many who have succumbed to his distractions. What was, the, what was the great commission? Go make disciples. Over the last couple of months, I've been saying this. I've been asking, who right now, some of you have been saved longer than I've been. Some of you have been saved as long as I've been alive. And you have yet to make one disciple. Did you know that he gave us a command to make a disciple. Yes, he did. You might be sitting here today, so I'm kind of old. I don't know what else I can do. Listen, you're going to have to get over that old age thing. The Great Commission. Because it is a Great Commission. You've got to get over the old age thing. There is so much more that you can do that you can ever even imagine. We just have the idea that we need to be able to sing and dance and look pretty. <laughs> Brother Larry, you got the, the last part. You got the pretty part. Got new hair? Okay, good. Well, less hair. <laughs> what I'm saying here is that you can let your light shine if you've got a light to shine. Amen. Back in the day when I when I would partake of the spirits, and I really didn't, this is ridiculous. I didn't like it. So why did I do it? Well, I like the way it makes me feel. I'm, really? Can I tell you there's something that makes you feel better than anything in the whole world? And that is knowing that you're walking in the favor and in the presence of God. Amen. 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 But the devil would, do, would love nothing more than to distract us from that commission, from the purpose, from the job. I'm going to call it the job. The job that we have been given. So if you have been lingering, listen, have lingering questions about your worth of, of, of God's nearness, how close he is to you, Know that the word says that he's not far from you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he's not far from anyone. Here it comes, ready? God is with everyone. Not everyone's with God. If it's if that's not the case, then, then Jesus lied. No, watch this. Pride wants to make you say, now I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll speak some, because I don't want you to think I'm preaching at you. Because I don't care if you get upset. <laughs> God, pride wants to make you think that because you're here in church this morning, because you pray, because you read your Bible, because you do this, that, and the other thing, 
God loves you best. There may be some truth to that. Some truth. But how many of you want the whole truth? I mean, all of it. You want all that God has to offer? You see, we don't earn God's favor. We don't. And we don't need to fear reaching out to him because maybe maybe you're realizing something. Usually what happens, um, you know, Brother Ed, quite often when, when people compare themselves with others, it's because they're trying to make themselves feel better. Well, at least I'm not like that one over there. What? Story in the Bible about that too, isn't there? At least I'm not like that one. See, when we come to a place where we're broken over our own weakness, when we're broken over our own sin and our own failures, when we come to a place where we're grieved, there it is. And we can show mercy to someone else who's got their own problems. See, God's grace is good enough and great enough. It's more than good enough. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says this, approach God's throne with grace, uh, the throne of grace with confidence. Why do we want to approach that throne? So that we can receive mercy and find grace to, say, help. 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 No, wait a minute. Act like you need help. help. What? Help. Okay, help. you're going down for the third time. Help. Help. Someone asked me, because I, I, I talk a lot, I do. Um, yeah. Someone asked me, well, what, what would make a guy like you ask for help? Okay, a couple weeks ago, see that wound right there? I yelled for let help big and loud. And because I knew nobody should touch me, hello? I mean, you know, FYI, practic a practical lesson. If somebody is being electrocuted, don't touch them. Find something to push them over and get them off there, but don't touch them. Otherwise, you get to join them. Hello? Mm -hmm. Man, I can preach that one. <laughs> something tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, I was caught. Nobody came. So what did I do? I cried out to Jesus. Literally. As loud as I could, as loud as I could muster, God help. I didn't care if he helped us, me, he 